Hey, I think I'm live. Happy Monday. I'm happy to let you know that tonight we have a brand new tag talk with myself and Maggie Doodle. So let's launch this reseller robo. Good evening, Maggie Doodle. Hello. How are you? I'm good. It's How great you? to see you. I'm great. A little bit stressed, but hey, Glenn. Good Hi, to see Glenn. you here. I hope you make a sale during the show. I may play some juju in a few minutes, and but what I'm going to do is I'm not going to play any cha-ching songs until towards the end because I don't really want to interrupt the flow of tonight's show because we got a lot to cover. Hey, Rita, how's it going with you? Rita! Greg's here. So welcome, everyone. It's been a long time, Maggie. I would say it's probably been close to eight months. Oh, my gosh. No. That long? I would... I was going to go back and look and I just haven't had a chance. Oh my gosh. It's been a long time. So I thought what we would do start first is just talk about in general, 2023, personal business, eBay, Poshmark, just anything that stands out to you that you want to talk about good, bad, indifferent. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, 2023 i mean business wise i business wise i was looking at my you know i'm finishing up my taxes because i have my tax appointment in a couple of weeks and uh my my overall sales were up but my profits were down okay so i need to you know i've been doing a few things to address that i think i've just been spending too much um yeah too much money on things that I don't need to be spending money on. I'm just it's showing cool. that Crystal came in just now and Craig. And then my life has gotten just crazy, right? So in the latter latter part of the year, I started, it was probably around September when everything went haywire. I think I told everybody about my weird medical issue in September, my amnesia and all of that. And, um, and about that time, I also started doing a part-time job. So that, that whole thing just upended my life and my schedules and my carefully scheduled time. So yeah, I've just been making a lot of changes to adjust to life changes. Yeah. Um, you enjoy the part-time job, don't you? you like oh, I love it. Doing? I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, I think we were talking about AI on my channel and you were saying you use AI a lot for that. Right. I started, I started, I never really paid attention to it. And I started using like uh, chat GPT. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's fascinating mm -hmm. and frightening a little. <laughs> it's, I, have, I hear a lot of people talking about Bard and I haven't gone over there to check that out yet that they're saying Bard is better than ChatGPT, uh, but it could just be for what they're doing. So I haven't made that leap yet. So, yeah, I think, I mean, I think like I also use a app or a program called Hoppy Copy. <laughs> Which is a uh, which is AI gift spirit geared specifically towards marketing, hmm. marketing. Uh, oh gosh, my brain isn't working. Wording and copy, you know, writing for marketing. So yeah, Craig's it's a great tool if you learn how to talk to it, and that's exactly what it is. You have to learn how to ask it the right questions. Okay. And it can really change. It well, I might go to that and check it out for my podcast, especially for the marketing for that. Yeah. Yeah. Anything so, else you want to say about 2023? I don't, I don't think so. It was, it just was a year of, of, uh, yeah, changes. 
Well, mm -hmm. my 2020, um, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and change is good if scary. Yeah. Um, How about you? Um, my 2023 was going great. I was doing really, really well on eBay. And in July, it just tanked went down 46% from the month before and it just continuously went down. I ended up being um, more than $2,000 under every month gross. Um, and uh, I attributed that a lot to my experiment that I did with the dresses a couple of years ago because I was buying dresses of all sizes and styles. It was an experiment. And I think what happened is as these items sat longer and longer and longer, they just, um, there were so many of them and a lot of them did sell. I'm not going to say they didn't sell. They did, but I had so many, I just went full force, you know, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have done like what I'm doing now, like with the pajamas, I'm doing plus size pajamas. They're right. going great. I'm doing men's shirts, three XL and up. You know, when I added dresses, I feel like I should have added just plus size dresses. And I think that hurt me a lot. And then what else? I don't know. But what ended up happening, it, it did. I couldn't believe it. But I was like a little more than 10 percent under from the year before. And I would have thought it would have been a lot more than that because but all that money spread out over the 12 months. Right. And so, yeah, it wasn't as bad after all. It just was from July to Same, right. right. So, um, well, anyway. I had ramped it up earlier in the year, like earlier in 2023, I had started to put some processes in place that were really working and my sales really ballooned up. So then when I, when September happened and then I got the job, so I wasn't putting as much into the business, then it went down. But like I said, overall, it, it averaged itself out so that overall I was up for the year, but my, my net was not up for the year. So yeah, that's something that has to be addressed because yeah. Okay. So we've had several people come in. Hello everyone. I think maybe before we go to our next uh, topic, maybe we should send out some juju. Okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. Hope y'all make some sales. Over here dancing let me know if you make a sale during the show i'll try to play a song for you as we uh in between topics because we do have several things we want to talk about tonight and um so since we talked about last year let's go ahead and talk about this year how's it going so far <laughs> yeah, so far good so yeah so we talked about change earlier you and i were talking about changes that we've made so one of the things I did was roll, I think, hey, Valerie, chick flicker. Hey, Valerie. One of the things I think affected my net was the amount I was spending on promoted listings. So, but you don't want to mess with it too much, right? But what I did do was I pulled promoted listings off everything except clothing. So, okay. yeah. So I, because before I was just doing a blanket, yeah, promoted, promote uh one percent above trending and so i pulled it off those things and i think that's been good and then i uh barry hi hey, barry so um that was one thing i did and i still have to me mess with my settings on clothing i think because i put a cap at 12 percent but I think I might need to go up a little bit 
on that. But if I look at my last like three three months listing or sales, I would say about I would say about a third of them did not sell through promoted listings. Okay. What did you say your cap was? 12. Okay. So I think I need to go a little up on that. I'm at 13 right now. Okay. You feel like normally they're selling at eight to 10 is when I look at them. I don't look at all of them, but I do look at them periodically. And normally it's between eight, 10% that they're almost every single piece of clothing I sell is promoted. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike, how are you? So maybe 12% is a good, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, What about, I've been thinking about this. Should I even be promoting my appliance parts? I, I I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think unless there are so many parts, like if, if somebody, that's what I figured, especially with like my, some of my, um, my cookbooks, like just some of my books, if I look, I'm pretty choosy about what I put on eBay in terms of books. So I don't put something out there that, you know, that there's a lot of. So I think you have to look and see when you're listing a part, are there that many of that exact part out there that it's not going to show up on the first page? Because I kind of feel like. Right. But I set my promoter listings every day. So I would have to oh, yeah. do it by category, which I may be able to do it fairly easily. I haven't changed them today, by the way, because I've been so busy working on this USPS shipping stuff. Like I have literally got nothing done today besides oh, it's been a nightmare. Um, So you're going to, you're, you thinking about changing your promoter listings. What else? Um, I did. I looked at, the amount of money I was spending on things to help me do other things. So like Poshmark, my sharing app. So I did do away with that. I just don't have a bot anymore. I don't have a bot anymore. And I, I've started just sharing myself, although it's super frustrating. I don't, if you've never used Poshmark's in-house, sharing feature you it you have to do um what's that capture cap capture capture yeah yeah well but it's 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 crazy <laughs> so you have to literally do it maybe t- today i had to do it 20 times just keep solving the puzzles 20 puzzles and then it would share another few on our listings and then it came up again. So I had to share another like 20. It's making sure times. you're not a bot. But I don't know. I'm using the feature. <laughs> their feature. Uh, um, I know. Their feature. Have I, you considered using the free one flip? I have. I I, I need to look into it. But yeah. I found that. Uh, you can ask Valerie because she uses it if she's happy with it. As far as I know, she's only had one issue with it, and I think it got resolved in about a day or so. I mean, uh, my sales are up since dropping the bot, basically. But, and that's the only thing that's super fresh. And it doesn't happen on my phone. It happens on the desktop. So, like, when I wake up in the morning, like, 6 a.m., the first thing yeah. I do is I go on and I set it up and I let it run. Yeah. And then I do it, like, during the 10 o'clock party. But if I try to do it during the day on my desktop, it's it's almost and if you had more sales without the bot than you did with the bot i have <laughs> i have it I, makes no sense <laughs> i don't know i don't understand it but that's one thing i've done um and another thing is i, I looked at my offers so i stopped accepting lowball offers i just started counter offering and not worrying about it if they decline i feel like i have to stop i had to stop accepting i think i had it in my head you know if i get a low offer especially first thing in the day it would help me set up for more sales but i i don't think that's the case and i found like i wondered if people were looking at although people can't see what the accepted offer was i don't think if they just look at your at your souls no like if they look at your feedback and they see the line through it they can't see that you accepted a lower offer but um 
Yeah, and I've stopped even doing offers for like the first. Oh, and when I do, when I send out my offers, I send them out without the counter offer box checked. Mm -hmm. And I just find that I'm selling more on offers higher mm -hmm. because they don't allow the counter offers. Um, so yeah, and I've been just, I've just been going through my old inventory and re ending and relisting just a few mm -hmm. a day. So I think those things may be helpful. I don't, I don't know. I guess time will tell. Anything else? Um, no, I just feel like, um, no, no, I think that's about it. Those are the changes that I've made anyway. Crystal's internet went out, but it's back up. Oh, no. Welcome back, Crystal. Oh, I've spent all day, literally all day, trying to connect my printer to Wi-Fi, and I just can't figure it out. Your camera? My my printer. Oh, your printer. Yeah, because I've rearranged the office, and I don't want to have to put the printer on my desk. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to connect it to Wi-Fi. And is it an HP? It's an HP. Yeah. I can't figure yeah, it out. This is this one's been a problem, but I got it during COVID and it was the only one they literally had on the shelf that I could afford. I didn't have a choice. I just got it. And I thought I'll just get this and I'll get another one later. And I still have it. And, you know, I haven't replaced it. And, but it, I, that's why I got it. The scanner on it is terrible. You have to scan it from your phone and it doesn't even make a PDF. It just sends you an email with it in the middle of the email. I mean, it's terrible. If I have to have anything official scanned, I have to take it to the office to make it look nice. <laughs> so uh, did I see your question at the top, your thoughts on it? Was that the one about Poshmark? Yeah, notice on Poshmark, they are asking to sign up for free promotions. Do you know anything about that, Maggie? So they're at, yeah, they're pushing this free promoted, this promoted closet. As opposed to, I think, so you promote your entire closet. For free. Well, I think, so it's one of those pay-per-click programs. Oh, no, thank you, no. And I don't even know that they're offering anything for free right now. Oh, so they're offering the two-week free trial. Oh, okay. And then what they're offering is a two-week free trial, and then your promotion will auto-renew at the current budget, which the, the budget they have set or they have suggested is $35. And then you can you can cancel it before the trial ends. Um, I, haven't, I haven't looked into it or tried it, but I heard such bad things about the other – the promoted listings, the Poshmark promoted listings that uh, I don't intend to, I don't intend to try it. Glenn, thank you for reminding me about your question. Uh, guys, just do that. Put your question back in if I miss it. I didn't miss his. I was going to answer it and then I forgot. I did too. <laughs> me too. I saw it and then I forgot. Has anybody else like, like Crystal or has anybody else used, um, tried to promote it? I just haven't heard anything good about it. Yeah. Um, Courtney, I think, has talked about it on her channel. Common Tags. Yeah. I think she has. Yeah, she has. Yeah, and she didn't have good things to say about it, if I remember. Hey, Adam, how are you? I thought somebody else, too, maybe like Becky Park or something. I don't. All right, here's interesting, Maggie. Most people that I know that have tried it say that their sales completely stopped after they stopped using promoted. Ah, so it mm -hmm. it bumps them up, but then it really mm -hmm. pushes them down. Thank you, Crystal. Yeah, I just haven't heard. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about on that topic before I answer? You cannot pick the items you want to promote. Posh picks it for you. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah. That, that's just not a good deal. Sorry. Um, in, until Poshmark starts getting out of this archaic way of of showing, like I couldn't even get an address today for a, a buyer to open a claim. I couldn't see the address anymore because the label had already been printed last week or the week before. I had to talk to the buyer and talk them into giving me their full name and address 
so I could go to UPSPS and open up a lost mail package. Like I can't even do that. Mm -hmm. I can't on the sales screen when I'm doing my sales video every month, this month I'm doing what sold fast, like what sold quickly. I listed it in January and I sold it in January. When you're on the sales page, you can't see what, what date it sold. Right. So I have to go way down and then just start clicking until I get to January 1st. And you can't even see, like, you can't see your skew or anything from You can't see that. I mean, so until they start, you know, if they ever do, I don't know. I still have trouble sometimes finding my items um, to take them off. Um, I'm not going to give any more money to Poshmark until they kind of come around to that. Yeah. But And then they... They also there they came out with where they you can print packing slips, but the packing slip prints with the label. So that if you use the four by six label, your <laughs> packing slip prints great four by six label. You can't like print the packing yeah. slip. We, at least you couldn't when I tried it. That was a little while ago. I don't think yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, they're not user friendly in terms of seller, you know, feature. Yeah. 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 Are you finished? Are you sure? You, yeah. If you think of something else, come back. Okay, to it. I think. If you think of any other changes. I think that is all. I believe that is all. How about you? Um, this year, I am only pretty much sourcing anything extra large and up. Today, I sourced 110 items, and I broke that rule about five times just because of the brand. Well, yeah. I knew, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. There's certain yeah, I, there are a couple of them that I got a Lori Goldstein amazing jacket. Oh, what size? It was, I think it was a large. It's, it's just amazing. Okay. And I was not going to let that sit there. It was called Logo Leisure or something like that. And I was like, there's no way I'm not taking this with me. You know, I've never seen anything like it. Um, you got to give me first dibs. Yeah, I, 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 when I go through, I will show you some of the things. Um, can I tell I, you, can I tell you what I'm wearing? Or are we going to do that later? Tell you what you're wearing? Can I tell you what I'm wearing? Yes. Or should we do it later? So I'm wearing my logo, Lori Goldstein tunic top that you ate, that I bought from you. You can't see, can you? Oh. Oh no, I can't go back far enough. So, oh, okay. The, it's kind of pink. It's a pale pink. Yeah, because it has the pockets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. And I just put the vest over it. I've worn it like three times. And then that's a charter club, right? And this is a charter club. Yeah, this is a cl charter club vest. Mm -hmm. But I love it because it, it's exactly, you can't say, but it's exactly the right length. Always the fashionista. I mean, I'm sure y'all go back and see Maggie's recent haul video. It was awesome. It was adorable. I love logo Lori Goldstein. So let me look at the jacket. I'll pay you, you know. Yeah, I, I have a few other items. You, I just, you know, I think there's a few others I thought of you. Um, I'm staying away from brands that I have too many of for the most part. Um, Chico's, I'm only doing size three and up, um, which is extra large. Sure. I'm not doing, I'm not buying Worthington right now. I'm not buying sag harbor right now i have too many and i just feel like they've got enough choices um unless it's like i said unless it's just some awesome piece that i know i can sell pretty quickly i'm staying i'm just trying to look through my closet and go okay beth if they can't find a chico's extra large top in this store that they like then they need you know i mean uh, sorry <laughs> there's just there's too many yeah, um, but they're selling. It's just right. I've accumulated so many. I have my extra small to large items right now on forty percent off best offer. I actually took a five dollar offer yesterday on something that had been sitting for two years. Um, I'm just like I said. I think I have just accumulated so much of these smaller sizes, mm -hmm. and I originally wanted to be known as plus size. And how I got off track. I don't know. I think it's from the dresses. I really do. I don't see that many tops that are extra smalls. So I just got off track. And so yeah. now I'm trying to reel it back in 
know what my metrics are when I walk through the door. This is what I'm here to get. And I've got three hours and by God, I'm going to get as much as I can in three hours. Um, I would have stayed longer today, but my shoulder was bothering me and all that back and forth was really getting to me. Um, I, my store is now up 46% from last month and I don't know why, but I'm suspecting that one of the reasons is because every day I'm taking inventory and so I'm letting 30 items go live instead of 15. 15 of those items, those drafts are newly listed items that I just, you know, photographed and everything. The other 15 or so are items that I've taken down. I take a category down from my store and I, I, yeah, I end them all and I sit here with them. It doesn't take me long at all. Like Valerie will tell you, I only had about 12 drafts today completed, but I went and I pulled all the gray section out and now I have 60 drafts in my drafts. So I have enough for two days to go live. And I really feel like eBay is reading those as new listings yeah. because I'm changing a photograph and I'm changing something in the title. It can be as something as simple as I write out extra large in the, with words. And then I put XL. If I really swamp like today, I just took the XL off of the title and that was my change. <laughs> um, or I can change the word career to office or I can put basic in there. I wasn't using the term basic a lot the last couple of years. Sometimes I'll pull casual out and put basic or I'll take, you know, something. So I just change one thing in the title and then hit draft, you know, save to drafts. And right there is an extra draft. And it, and I know it's working because a lot of the things that are selling seem to be the things that I just inventoried in the last, you know, few weeks. So I know that they're seeing them as new listings. And so I'm going to keep doing that. I only have about 300 more pieces to inventory. My entire store of 4,000 plus items will be inventoried wow. in less than a year. And I'm just going to start over. I'm going to start over with them. Um, my first one is animal print. I'm just going to start over with animal print and do the same thing. And, and it, it makes me feel so good also because I haven't had to refund anybody because I don't have it because it sold on Poshmark. I forgot to take it off. I know I have it because right. I inventoried it. So um, that's what I've done. I've added appliance parts to my store and I was being drugged by my heels <laughs> to put it, put appliance parts in with the clothing. But I think it was the right thing to do because I had the feedback. I had a lot of feedback and good feedback. And I think that builds buyer's confidence. I've sold, I think 20 parts this, this month. And, um, and I'm, I'm copying everything I purchased pretty much. If you know, I'm not putting crap in my store, um, you know, parts that aren't going to sell unless I got them from Kimmy that I am putting some things back that I had given yeah. Kimmy and I got back and I feel like, well, I already have them. I might as well put them up because I need drafts, you know, but mostly there's good stuff. And then I changed my price buckets. That's my last thing. My price bucket used to start at $24.99, $27.99, $32.99. I have now started at $19.99. And I have that number in mind for like a t-shirt. Right. Okay. A striped t-shirt from let's say, I don't know, Romans maybe, or just a striped t-shirt, you know, can't think of a brand right now <laughs> for, for anything. And then I go up. Okay. Well, does it have bling on it? Is it a larger size? Is it larger than a one X? In other words, does it have a really cute tie or a tie hem, or does it have a picture of a swan on it? And I got to go up from there instead of starting at the 24 99 and going up or going down a little bit for, I was going down for plain t-shirts then for $19.99. So I'm hoping that'll help me make more money. And um, I was going to put this on goals, but it should be for changes. I've now changed to standard shipping. So when someone buys a pair of jeans from me and they pay 8 dollars 
sometimes I can ship them ground advantage for a little over six dollars. Yeah. And I get to keep the rest. Before that, I had to ship in a flat rate envelope for seven sixty. It's now seven ninety nine or something like that. And so I'm hoping that, like you said, my net sales will be higher in 2024 because I think my money was going to shipping. Shipping that could very well be. Valerie yeah. says, wait, say that louder, please. So I take it she's the one who told you to put the appliance parts in with your clothes. It's her and Bridget. Yeah. We had to have a meeting about it because <laughs> they had to have an intervention. It was rough. Like I was really fighting it. And I, I don't even like to go to my store anymore because really you see tunics and pants and then you see a freaking coffee filter. It looks dumb. It but does. It drives me crazy too if I go to my storefront and I see video games and books and but mm -hmm. what are you gonna do? <laughs> but I had I had to be. Uh, it's okay. You can be honorary as you want. Um, I had I had to I had to listen. Yeah. I had to listen, and I don't think all those parts would have sold if I put them in another store. No, I really I don't. don't. I mean, I'm the one. I'm one of the ones that told you not to do it that way. So I'll I'll eat my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah can't be the queen of parts anymore but that's okay that's okay it's okay all right anybody make a sale yet i haven't i'm surprised yeah, today, today's been my slowest day this month so far i've made 21 dollars um this is like the slowest day so I don't know. It's probably a good thing because I have to get up really early in the morning and I will be in the office all day tomorrow. We have clients, so I can't spend a lot of time in the morning shipping a, a carafe or anything like that in the morning. Got to get out of here. So, yeah. Laughing at Valerie. Valerie likes to tell me what to do, but that's okay. That's what she's there for. So, do you have any goals for uh, 2024? Maggie, yeah, I do. So one of my goals is this. I'll put year, you on yourself. There you go. Oh, you need, to, you need to do that. But this year, just for a second, I have. Um, so in 2022, like prior to that, I had almost no repeat buyers. So this year, my repeat buyers were up like 21 percent. Uh so I really want to increase my repeat buyers. And one of the ways I want to do that is I feel like I need to also kind of do what you've been doing with getting rid of the smaller sizes and putting bigger sizes. That being said, the last three things I listed were small. <laughs> I listed this beautiful, beautiful Michael Kors top with like gold. I know I can't. I no, can't. it's okay. Like when you get them, you have to. But I feel like to, oh, uh, Glenn made a sale of an hour ago. Oh, well, we haven't been on for an hour. So <laughs> We've only been on 33 minutes. Sorry, he always does that. But we'll, we'll applaud for you. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I really want to increase my, my repeat buyers. And I think I can do that. I want to, you know, more focus on the plus sizes. I want to do more, I think, maybe social media. I think that might help me if I put listings and it's so easy, especially from eBay to put your listings right out on Facebook. Now that practically does it for you. Um, and I want to do more. I want to do more of the YouTube thing. I, I don't know that that would really help me with repeat buyers, but more of a presence. I don't, I don't know. I feel like now, I mean, my, my YouTube is tiny as you know, but like I'll do the thrift that look challenge videos and I might get 70 or 80 views. And then I did the unboxing of your reseller box that I bought from you. And that video had 266 views, which is, which is a lot for me. And then my own, um, just want to take a look at my own, um, recent, uh, Oh goodness. What was it? Yes, was it yesterday that I put out the video? What's today? Today's Monday. So Sunday morning, I put out a video, the thrift haul, and it's got 76 views so far, which is is a lot for me in the first day. So I feel like I want to do more of those. 
Oh, and this is sold something on Poshmark. That doesn't count. An hour ago doesn't count. No, she no, she said she sold it that she already sold it on eBay. Oh, oh no. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. Hey, at least it's not the other way around. I've done that so many times recently. You see, Bumcrack said if someone gets a return during the show, do you play something in reverse? If only I could. No. If only I could. I don't think I don't think my editing software does that, but I'll check. Uh, hi, bum crack. Uh. So yeah, so I at least want to do that. And then my my just my big overall goal for my business money is I just want to pay off some debt this year. I really want to focus it. I want to do the Dave Ramsey snowball and uh, get rid of some things. Mm -hmm. So that's my that's really my goal for that. Um, I feel like I read this book a few years ago called Atomic Habits. It's one of the best books out there. It's awesome. And the, the phrase that stuck in my mind was, you don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. And the other day I was listening to a talk. I use this app called Insight Timer. I don't know if you've ever heard about it, but it, it has like meditations and talk, just inspirational things. And this guy was talking about, um, he was talking about how to win or how to, how to always succeed. I forget the, the dang, but the basic, I forget the title of the thing, but it was about that you, if you're doing something that you can't focus on succeeding at something where you are not in control. Um, and I immediately thought of like my chorus competitions where we go in and we hope to maybe win or place high or get, you know, and sometimes we don't always do as well as we hope we would do. And realistically, we don't actually have any control over that. We don't have any control about what the judges are going to think. We don't have any control about what other competitors are going to do. But we can set goals for ourselves that we can achieve. And so I want to set some goals for myself, kind of revamp my way of working so that I can set some goals and focus on one of the things he said was follow the process and not the prize. Focus on my process and not necessarily on goals that I don't know whether I can achieve or not. Like, I don't know if I can achieve a monetary amount and I don't know if I can achieve a number of sales, but I know that if I can achieve a number of listings per day, I know that I can achieve, you know, and that's a lot of things that you do. It's a lot of things that you taught me during our, um, my story, the story review that you did for me. So I want to, um, I actually went back and watched that, rewatched it again and took some notes and, and I want to focus on the process basically is what I want to do this year. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. It does. Okay. And guys, if y'all have any goals for 2024, feel free to put them in the chat. I'd love to read them. Um, any other goals for you? No, I think that's, that's it, I think. Well, mm. I would like to buy a plus size mannequin. Mm. And I would preferably like one that spins. That would, be, that would be perfect. I have a $200 Amazon card in my purse that someone gave me for Christmas. And I'm going to look on Amazon and see <clears throat> if I can put that towards one. Uh, it would save me a lot of I mean, it will save me a lot credible amount of time, but every second counts. Right. And my time crunch is, is I'm, my time is getting smaller and smaller and I can see that that's not going to improve, um, any, anytime soon. We've just got so much going on here. You, you guys have no clue. <laughs> and so even if I can save, um, you know, a minute or 30 seconds on each, uh, item that I photograph, when I photograph 40 items, that's just 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, um, of time. And so 7XL Lumu this, this morning. I didn't know. I didn't know 7XL existed. And I, in Maggie, immediately said, 
how are you going to photograph that? And I'm like, I have no idea. Um, like, so do you it, put your regular, you put your plus size clothing on the, your regular mannequin? Yeah, I do. Unless it's just hanging off and then I put it on a hanger. Yeah. But I don't know what this is even going to look like on a hanger. So, um, and please guys, I'm not making fun of people that wear seven XL. I'm just saying I've never seen one this size before and I don't know how I'm going to photograph it, but yeah. I was not going to leave it there for what I get for what I pay. I just yeah. wasn't, um, laid on the bed. But anyway, that's one of my goals. And, but I'm going to wait until the end of February before I do that, because I want to make sure that this month is not a farce. Like I want to make sure a fluke, I want to make sure that my sales are going to be, you know, good for the first part of the year before I go chunking. I imagine a, a mannequin like that's going to cost more than $200. I would almost probably, I mean, I have a plus size mannequin that I never use because she's so unwieldy. So if you've got one that would spin, that would be mm -hmm. big. Yeah. That reminded me of one thing though, that I did change, change that I didn't mention is that I started taking pictures of my measurements instead of writing down the measurements. Mm -hmm. That has saved me a lot of time. And I've been is, doing that on my appliance parts this time. Yeah. And this is, it says laying on the bed and background erase or on the floor. I do a lot of pictures on the floor, not directly on the floor, but I have like a big cardboard poster board and I lay that on the floor and I lay the thing on top. But that's a killer on your back. Um, actually, I'm thinking about Nicole State when she had years ago that spinning mannequin i'm wondering if maybe she didn't have a spinning base that she put the mannequin on oh like a lazy susan that would be even better because then i could put my male mannequin on there and my regular mannequin on there oh, wow. um and i know she had a remote control for it but I don't know if it was a mannequin that was spinning or the the base that was spinning. But I remember when she got that, I'm like, oh, my God, that is so awesome. <laughs> oh, spinning base. And this just says, honestly, I have a hard time reading tape measurements in the pictures. So what I've been doing is I'll take a picture of the whole thing, say, from armpit to armpit. And then I'll zoom in on the number. And I hope that I put the pictures in in such a way that they can tell that, yeah, that was the wide shot and this is the close up. Like, this is what I'm using. It's a collapsible, it's for children actually. Oh, that's a great it's idea. It's a yardstick. That's a great idea. And it's bright yellow and it's awesome. And I don't know why I didn't do it before for my appliance parts, but um, it's awesome. I think I paid about $7 for it. <laughs> that's a good idea. Uh, my main goal this year is to go to garage sales, which I hate, estate sales, which I hate even worse. Hotels, but I love garage sales. And flea markets and rummage sales. I don't like driving and stopping and driving and stopping by myself. Now, if somebody will go with me and we can chat in the car yeah. and we can stop for a coffee or something on the way, you know, that's fun, but I don't have anybody to do that with. And it's boring as heck to me. And then you find the place, you find a place to park, you get up there and they got nothing. And you got to get back in the car and find the next. It's not fun to me by myself. Now, I loved it with Santa. It was fun going garage selling with Santa because we're running around going, well, what do you got in your hands? And what do you got in your, you know, yeah. that was fun. It is fun. Oh, well, I'll have to fly out there once a month and do your sales. Okay. So Barry, it was just the base, right? I'm up more for the spinning base because then I can use the mannequins that I have also, but. Um, standard shipping, I already talked about that. I already changed that. Um, my other goal is to offer more reseller boxes. Um, as I've told you guys, I've hit a dead end with the reseller boxes because I don't have any more boxes to put oh. the stuff in. And I haven't been thrifting enough to get excess. Yes. I skipped last week because I wasn't, it was like flooding 
And I just was like, I'm not getting out in this to go to the thrift store. I'm just not. And I should have, because today there's nothing like thrifting when you know you have to have a certain number of items. It wasn't as fun today. I had to have a hundred items before I left. Before yeah. I had to, and I'm just standing there going, okay, don't, don't buy this just because you need another item. Quit thinking that way. Just, I passed up so many good things today that were not extra large enough because I'm like, no, it, I got to reel it in Beth and I'll just stay an extra 20, 30 minutes. If I have to, I'm going to get my hundred. So it's hard. It's so hard. Thank you, Debbie Downer. Oh, we will have so much fun, Barry. I'm so excited about that. Oh, yeah, that'll be so much fun. Yeah, that'll be a ton of fun. It'll be even more fun with all the women, right, Barry? Instead of just me. I still think you should have bought that kilt, though. <laughs> um, my I last goal. A kilt. Oh, this thing was so moth-eaten, but it was the coolest kilt. He wanted it so bad. But I don't know if anybody would have paid for it. But it was an, it was the coolest thing. It had all kinds of stuff. Well, I thought he was going to wear it. I think he was going to wear the kilt. He he kept going back to it, going, "I want this so bad." It was in such bad shape. Um, if that could have gone like in a museum or something, maybe I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, Lord help you, all the estrogen in your car. The last goal that I have is to get back to my work until noon schedule. And realistically, I don't think that's going to happen for a while until this USPS thing um, that we're having in Houston uh, improves. Is because I literally spent two hours today of my time dealing with buyers and eBay. And I can't, you know, I can't stop at noon when I'm working for two hours on... Right. I, I have opened probably 25 cases now on USPS and I'm getting them all mixed up. I probably should have started with a spreadsheet and I didn't do that because I didn't realize how bad the problem was. And now I'm getting people messaging me that have messaged me before, but I don't know that they've messaged me before and they act like they've never messaged me before. And then I realize I've already opened up a case for them and I'm like, well, then why are you asking me this? Like I've already told you the issue um so what is unless it, I go that, back in all my messages I'm going to stay, stay confused I have four cases opened up against me for um you know seller resolution or whatever and I got two of them closed today but I still have two more and I can't do anything until tomorrow on one of them and then the other one I have to wait and call back Wednesday eBay won't let me handle them both tomorrow what so is a eBay, lot of work. Is, what is eBay saying? Like, are they? Some people are just so confused. I think I have a language barrier on one oh. because she keeps asking me if her package is lost. And I keep saying it's not lost. It's stuck. It's just sitting there. Right. No, and I said, Google not. Houston USPS shipping delay and you will see what we're dealing with here. It's not lost. It's just sitting there. <laughs> they know where it is. It's in the sorting center. <laughs> now they don't know exactly where it is, but they know it's there. And just try, you know, and some people have been incredibly nice. And then other people have been real. I mean, we're talking about over a Star Wars pajama top that they probably spent $10 on. Like it's the end of the world that they haven't received it yet. I mean, you know. One lady uh, is, she needs hers for work, she says, her pants, you know, but what can you do? I can't, it's not in my control. Right. So, but it stresses me out because it's taking my time away from listing. That's what, you know, I came walking in the door today and I was just like, because I had like, uh, the whole time I'm at the thrift store, I'm just like, you know, message, 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 case opened, message, message, you know. And I was just like, I, I want to go home and list. And I can't. Huh? 
It's so stressful. It, it is. It is stressful. And I'm trying to keep them from opening cases. And the other thing, guys, here's a tip. <laughs> I learned this the hard way. And maybe you already know about it. But when you have somebody's, when somebody's package is lost and, and you open a case for them, remind them when they view the tracking to go to usps.com and put their tracking number in for them not to rely on eBay's tracking. Because when they hit their tracking number right now, it says this item was shipped on January 9th. That's all it says. Right. And that's all they think happened. But when you go to USPS, it says um, label created, item picked up, item is in Missouri City, stop. Or, and then sometimes it'll say it's on its way to the next facility. But eBay and USPS do not have a good connection right now. And it's probably USPS's fault. Like when I called, when eBay called me today and I said, I need this case closed. And they go, well, it's lost. And I said, it was delivered yesterday. That's because the eBay representative was looking at the eBay tracking. She was not going to USPS and looking to see it was delivered on the porch yesterday or Saturday or whenever the last shipping day was. So if you can tell your buyers that it kind of calms them down. And then I usually say in all caps, good news, exclamation point, this item is moving, <laughs> you know, and I try to just be really like good news, you know, and <laughs> crazy to me that it's going on this long and the U the well, doesn't see it. I don't think I, I talked to my mail carrier today. That's the thing I was going to say, but I, I'll just say it now. Um, I talked to my mail carrier today and he said that every morning they have a meeting and the supervisor says you must scan packages when you pick them up on the porch. You have to scan them on the porch. You don't scan them in your truck. You don't scan them when you get back to the post office. You scan them on the porch, which I have a I have a late shipment um, number on my thing because some of my substitute mail carriers did not scan them on the porch. So then they're considered lost because I have no proof that the p post office got them. As far as they know, I just created a label. Right. I have no proof. Um, and so, you know, we were talking about that today. He goes, the supervisor says that every single morning, scan, 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 scan. That's how she says it, scan, scan. And they still don't do it sometimes. Uh -huh. um, they'll tell me, well, I can't scan it right now. I said, well, you need to scan it right now. And they say, no, I can't scan it right now. I'll scan it when I get back to the post office. And I'm like, I'm going to hold you to it. What is your name? <laughs> because you know, they're supposed to scan it on the port. And this is a good example of that. If, if I didn't have a diligent mail carrier, oh my gosh, I would have so many that I would have to pay for. Right now, it only looks right now that I'm going to have to pay for one this week because it's not moving at all. And I only have two more days. So it's super frustrating. But there, I've still got like 24 more out there that they're probably going to eventually open up a case. I don't know. That kilt would have been a great find if it wasn't such, it was, it was beautiful. Even ugly. It was even beautiful being in bad shape. Uh, Wade is on Instagram big time. Does Wade have a whatnot? Where does he say? He does his auctions um, live. And then I know a lot of times you pay for his, um, your sales on Poshmark. Um, he has Poshmark. That's because he had, I don't know if he still does that. That's what he was doing. He would put the listing on Poshmark and you would pay on Poshmark. And the reason he does that is what I was doing with my clothing sales. They would pay the sales tax. They handle the sales tax. Yeah. But they also I really wish PayPal would do that. It would make things a whole lot easier. Yeah. yeah. I just saw him today. He was on Instagram. He had an Instagram story. He was showing the stuff that he got. So so yeah, no, work till noon. That ain't gonna happen till all this mess calms down. It's not. Because I was doing it there for a while. 
Yeah. Yeah. And you were loving it too. Oh, I was loving it. I, it gave me so much more time to work with my podcast and, you know, stuff like that. So we wanted to talk about our last topic is brands that are selling well or not selling well changes in what we're seeing trends, I guess. Um, any, any brands that you've picked up Maggie that you hadn't picked up before? I know you had your reseller box and you got a few things that. So, yeah. so I had my reseller box, which I got 20, 21 items because I got an extra item thrown in there. Right. And I, I had, I started listing the stuff, I think January 9th and 10th. So that was what, three weeks ago, maybe. And it took me a few days to get everything up because I'm not as fast a lister as you, but I've sold five things. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Last time I talked to you, you'd only sold three. Did yeah. I give you an extra piece? You did. You sent me 21. Okay. Did right. I do that on purpose? I don't know. I don't remember. You don't remember doing that? Mm -mm. I, yeah, I got 21. Yeah. So I sold I sold five items. I was really happy. So I've made um, profit of more than, oh, probably like almost two thirds of what I paid for the entire box. Okay. Um, so another item or two, and I should have, you know, paid for the box itself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, so, but I did get a few brands that I that I don't find here, but mm -hmm. what I sold are the brands that my the good, you know, my standbys. So I sold Quacker Factory, Soft Surroundings, which I don't think I find as much of Soft Surroundings as you do. So, well, um, I've actually stopped picking that up. Really. Mm -hmm. I did pick up one today, but, and I was talking to Megan Mwenny one day and she said she's her soft surroundings, not selling well either. Oh, wow. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw the Quacker factory, uh, Catherine's dress barn, which I don't, that, that's one I don't generally, I see it, but I don't always pick it up. Soft surroundings. And then, and Isaac, the Isaac Mizrahi, which is a brand for that's been selling for me again lately. You know, it doesn't sell for a lot, but it, right. it sells pretty quickly. And for a while, I couldn't give it away. And now it's been. I sold. listed an Isaac Mizrahi 5X today. Did you? But the thing was that the tag, the brand tag fell off. <laughs> oh. It was, like it was hanging. And when I took the photo, it was just hanging. So I put partially you know brand tag partially detached and when i went to pick it up and put it in the baggie the whole freaking thing oh, fell uh, off so i went back to the listing and put brand tag completely detached oh, wow. <laughs> but it, yeah it was a new t-shirt it was a 5x and it was new and it had like a button you know how they put the button in the little plastic zip yeah. thing yeah and I, you know, it was a plain t-shirt, but I think at that size, it'll probably sell. But I did kind of, I did discount a little bit because of the tag being off. But. Oh, that's so funny. But yeah, uh, it's, just, it's just started selling for me lately. And also, let me see. Oh, you know what's been selling for me lately? That for a while was just completely tanked is Lularo. Mm -hmm. But I've been finding um, hoodies. Uh -huh. and sweatpants and things like that. That's what's been selling in Lula Road for me. I've been seeing a lot of it. And when I see it, I see it new with tags a lot, often. Maurice's is back to selling again for me. Is it? Yeah, I mean, it was tagged for a while and I quit selling it. JM Collection is my, one of my biggest sellers right now. Wow. I can't say that I, I ever found Maurice's. I should. Oh, I just got an offer on a Christmas sweatshirt. Oh, okay. um, I should have put one of those in your box, Maggie, at JM Collection. I think, I think you might have. Mm -hmm. I think you did. Um, and I do see JM Collection. I don't often see JM Collection in plus sizes. I guess. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. I I only get the plus sizes for the most part. Um, 
trying to see what chaps is selling super well for me i know you said it doesn't sell that well for you but chaps uh-huh yes oh so yeah you did send me a jm collection yeah i've sold several jm collections just in the last couple of weeks it looks like torrid's kind of slowed down now uh, torrid is on my list of uh brands that has picked up <laughs> They're on going to Maggie. <laughs> back up for me. Yeah. Yeah. But I picked it up today. I, I, I love their super soft knit shirts. Yeah. Um, I have one that is purple and blue tie dye. It's a three X. It's gorgeous. I wanted to wear it tonight, but it was too big. I, I thought, well, maybe, maybe it's shrunk a little and it was just like falling off but i wanted it so bad i wish it would have been in my size and they're so soft and stretchy and you know I yeah, love them. for a while that hadn't sold but it's picked up for me so all right so is there anything else you wanted to say before i close and tell the people about my channel and i don't think so Okay, guys, I have a feeling that tonight will be my last live stream this week, um, maybe two weeks until I get my head above water with all this USPS shipping stuff. Um, so I got some amazing items at the thrift store today, and I wish I could do a haul video this week, but it's just going to be impossible. So please go to my eBay store. It's linked down in the description if you need clothes. Um, you can get a 50% off discount for your entire order by putting in the coupon code row your boat. Um, all of these items that I got today will be listed within the next seven days. And um, I really appreciate you coming on Maggie. And we got to try to diligently do this. Yes. yes. Every month guys, if there's a certain topic um, involving fashion, um, things that Maggie and I talk about, please put that in the chat or in the comments below. And we would consider that for another show. So thank you so much, Maggie, for joining us and bye everyone. I don't know when I'll see you next time, but I'll probably, well, I will be uploading my sales videos at the end of the month. So, all right. Bye everyone. Bye everybody. Bye.